Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to develop spiritual stamina as people like Joshua and Caleb did in the Bible. People who were able to endure to the end, right? Face tribulation, temptations, afflictions of all kind from Satan the devil. We're going to be talking about how we can develop those skills so that we ourselves can also do the same in our own lives. So if you want to see it, we're going to be talking about the subject, developing spiritual stamina. But before we get into that, I would like us to begin with a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you have granted us today to talk more about your word. We pray that you crown this brief session with success as we delve into the scriptures to learn about how to develop spiritual stamina to be able to run the race of salvation to the end. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So with that, we are going to delve into today's video, which once again is going to be talking about how to develop spiritual stamina. That is how to be able to ensure, ensure quote unquote, because of course, you know, God is also involved in us being able to run the race to the end. That's why in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul was praying that the good work that God had begun in uh, Philippi, right, by uh, converting the Philippians to the message of Paul so that they'd begun to do what's right. Paul acknowledged the fact that God is also involved, but we're going to be talking about sort of some tips and, and ways in order to run the race of salvation to the end. Because, remember... The Bible makes it clear that the only way we're going to be able to reap the fruits of our labor in God's service is if we finish it to the end. As we were told in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14, we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. And as Jesus Christ also said in Matthew chapter 24 verses 12 to 13, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure on to the end, the same shall be saved. If you also read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35, straight down to verse 39, you also see the same message there. Psalm 119, verse 33, and other verses all over the Bible. But now we want to quickly go over a few examples of people who were able to run the race to the end because of this spiritual stamina. And I mentioned one at the beginning of this video, Joshua and Caleb. All of the Israelites were able to leave Egypt successfully after God delivered them from Egyptian bondage. But we noticed that not all of them went or actually got to the land of Canaan. Some of them uh, fell by the wayside, as Jesus Christ would say, because they disobeyed God at different times. Some committed fornication, others lusted. If you read Numbers chapter 25 and Numbers chapter 11, many rebelled in Numbers chapter 14 and decided that they wanted to return to Egypt. Remember, this was the place God delivered them from. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 16, God's intention was that they would never return there again, but they wanted to go back. And so many more of them uh, perished at that time. And in other occasions, uh, when they rebelled against God and disobeyed his commandments. So as a result of different instances, most of them actually didn't get to the land. It was only Joshua and Caleb that were able to endure the afflictions the weather in the wilderness and how bad it was and the other conditions, right? Seeing other Israelites rebel against God, commit fornication, not join them in the process, but refrain all that and be able to successfully get to the end. Or how Job was able to endure all those sufferings that he went through at the instance of Satan the devil. If you read James chapter 5 verses 10 to 11, you see James in his epistle reflecting or talking about that. How you remember the patience of Job. And how uh, he saw the end of the Lord and stuff like that. Because uh, he was able to endure all that. And then God Almighty gave him double of what he had previously. Which is uh, spiritually significant. Because as Paul had said. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Which shall be revealed in us. Which uh, is a separate sermon by itself. And we've discussed subjects like the glorification of the church and endure hardship that good may come that uh, go in that direction. Even the lessons of Job, we've made a sermon on that as well. Uh, if you also remember the story of Jesus Christ, that's a story of spiritual stamina. How he was able to endure to the end, even till death. He was obedient to God even when his own life was at stake. If you read Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 8. And 
Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So we can go on and on about that and more examples, but what I really want to focus on in this video is how we can develop such spiritual stamina. What are the, what are some tips we should uh, look at? What kind of life should we live if we want to be able to, once again, quote unquote, and sure, because it's the Holy Spirit is involved, uh, God's grace is involved in us being able to run the race to the end because as Jesus Christ said, many will seek to enter in and shall not be able. If you read Luke chapter 13, verse 24. So if we see ourselves uh, worshiping God in truth for 10, 20, 30 years, that's a huge cause for celebration. And in this video, I want to really go into some of the, the tips and, and things that we should consider if we want to do that. In addition, of course, to the support that God will provide for us when we pray to him about that. So the first tip that I'm going to be talking about that I think is really important in being able to run the race of salvation to the end is being courageous. Now, I know that's easier said than done. Courage is not uh, like uh, following a manual where you just follow some basic instructions. It's a skill and it's a hard thing to develop. But nonetheless, right, it is important because Satan, the devil, as we know, is alive and well. He's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If you read 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. If we want to last in this race, we have to be able to say no. Yes, saying no is a big skill because people are going to throw things at us. We're going to have friends, co-workers, spouse, children who due to their inability often to understand the race, because I mean, if you look at the time of Jesus or the apostles, there were many people who didn't really understand who they were. They didn't understand uh, that they were running a unique mission, a unique race, right? Uh, they were just worldly people. You see the brothers of Jesus Christ, they didn't believe in him, right? So we have people like that around us who don't really understand the race that we're running, right? So, they're going to suggest things to us. They're going to want us to do things. They want us to be like them. We have to be able to refuse that. We have to be able to say no. And we shouldn't be pressured or intimidated into doing things that we don't really believe. And let me give you an example of this, right? If you remember the story of uh, Peter and how this was Paul telling the story of Peter, through Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, how Peter of course, from his knowledge, would eat with the Gentiles because the era where the, the Jews, because they were physically circumcised, was they were like a special people. That was now kind of over. And it was only those who would actually worship God in spirit and in truth, according to Jesus Christ, that would actually be saved, which is both Jews and Gentiles. And Peter would eat with the Gentiles based on this. But then when there were Jews present, people who were of the old tradition, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. So obviously it was because he didn't want to offend those people. He didn't want to be humiliated by those people. He didn't want to stand out from them. And that is an example of how to not be courageous. Even though he's an apostle, a leader of Christ's church, he, in that particular instance, did not have courage. But if you compare it to David, David had courage. No matter how big or tall or giant Goliath was, David wasn't intimidated by that. And that represents the challenges we'll face in life. Even if many people are against us, or even if maybe we're in huge kinds of issues, family issues, financial issues, whatever the case may be, we should be like David. Once again, easier said than done, but we should kind of take cue from the story of David, how despite how big Goliath was, he was still able to look beyond his hugeness and be able to uh, see somebody who had defied uh, the armies of God and therefore shouldn't be let to live any longer. And then God Almighty supplied the power for him to be able to defeat Goliath. And that was why Jesus Christ said, if ye uh, say unto this mountain, if you have faith, and you say unto this mountain, move and be cast into the sea, it shall be done for you. Yeah, Jesus Christ was talking about things like that. So courage is certainly a very important thing. Then another big tip 
is to not be a people pleaser. You see some people, they're people pleasers. Maybe they're at work. Uh, when, when, when their boss is around them, right? They, they, they're very diligent. They're hardworking. They're, they're making no mistakes. They're awesome. But then the moment their boss leaves, all of a sudden, they, they, their, their true self comes out, right? They begin to act differently just because there's nobody watching. Uh, if you read Colossians chapter 3, verses 21 to 23, Paul addressed this. Working for God, not working for men. If we get a job, for example, we shouldn't be thinking about it as, okay, I'm going to work for the boss. No, we're working for God. Yes, we're going to obey the boss, but the idea that we want to incur the boss's favor or incur the favor of our fellow coworkers, no, we want to work for God. Because if you don't do this, for example, and instead you want to kind of seek human validation, the issue is that the world we live in is not promoting righteousness. You can just see that today. Does the society promote uh, living according to the Bible, Christian values. No, the world, especially in our time, is more transitioning into secularity, atheism, worldly entertainment, jobs, mortgages, cars, uh, things of this life, as, as John the Apostle said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So if we want to seek human validation, we're actually going to find ourselves moving in that direction. We're actually going to find ourselves in a huge bondage. You see, uh, many of those, the, the elders in the days of Jesus, they knew that Jesus was the Son of God. They believed in Him inwardly, but they couldn't confess it. Because as it was said there, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. According to John chapter 12, verses 42 to 43. Paul also met many of such people pleasers. If you read Galatians chapter 6 verse 12 where he said, For as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. That is, they wanted to keep to the old Jewish tradition. And he concluded it by saying, Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. They didn't want to be uh, sidelined because of their beliefs. They didn't want to face that backlash. But if I, I personally believe that in order to last in this race, if you want to be people like Paul or Jesus Christ or some of those others who, as Paul said, I fought a good fight, I finished my course. If we want to finish our course like they did, we have to kind of live our own life, right? Do things just because that's who we are, that's what we want, and that's what we believe in. It's a lot more comfortable to live this life because being a people pleaser makes you feel inadequate when you live that life. Everybody's better than yourself. But when you live your own life, you're not really interested in what other people are thinking. So it's a huge kind of peace. And that was the peace Jesus promised us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, where he said, Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's that rest from such thoughts about what are people thinking on my left? What are people thinking on my right? And stuff like that. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Then the third tip that I want to talk about is being content. Contentment in this race. Let me tell you something. Contentment in this race is your best friend. There is no friend you want more than contentment. Because what Satan the devil does. He is a, he's a great advertiser. Let me just put that. He's a great advertiser. What he does is he wants to make you feel that what you have is never enough. The money you have isn't enough. The job you have isn't enough. The spouse you have isn't enough. Life is, it's always what you don't have that is bigger than what you have. That was what he did to Eve. If you read Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. Adam and Eve were living their fine life. No sickness, no death, no nothing. Everything was perfect. They couldn't ask for more. But what did Satan do? He made Eve feel like she was missing on some huge opportunity if she didn't disobey God and eat the forbidden fruit. And so she went and ate it. And you can see that's the principle most advertisers do. Even if what they're selling to you, you don't need it. They want to sell it to you like it's everything, right? You're missing a life opportunity here. So then many people, because of that, they buy into it only to see years on, maybe they wasted their money or their health isn't the same because they bought into wrong stuff and all that stuff. So the essence here is that being content 
is a huge plus in this race. So that even if Satan is selling us stuff, maybe he want, he's, he's trying to get you into a high paying job that will give you no time to worship God. Or maybe he wants you to leave your family, your marriage, because maybe you can marry that other person who comes from a wealthy family or, or has a high paying job or, or some other flashy thing that he wants to use to make you forget about God, forget about living according to God's principles. Contentment is a huge shield against that. Because contentment is where we say, you know what? Yeah, sure, that might be great, but I'm okay where I am. I'm okay with the job I have or the money I have. Maybe if you're a woman, I'm okay with what my husband is providing. I don't need more. I don't need to have uh, what everyone else is having. Because you're more, it, it, it's not because having what other people are having is a bad thing. It's because that's not the essence. You're more looking at the things of God and making sure that you're in line with his principles and so that's of more essence to you. And so you're fine with whatever life uh, that you're living, that God has given you. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 12, Paul spoke about how he had this gift of contempt. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Then the final tip that I want to talk about regarding how to develop spiritual stamina, that is how to ensure that we're going to last long in this race and be able to make it to the end, is to be a person of principle. That is, if you want to make a decision, for example, it's not based on the circumstance you are looking at. Like maybe if you're hungry, for example, then all you're thinking about is how to uh, stop feeling hungry, but instead more on principle. What is right? What is wrong? How can I make sure that I do what is right? Esau is a great example of how not to be somebody of principle. If Jacob asked Esau in any other circumstance, do you want your birthright or will you prefer to sell it to me? Esau would be like, of course I want my birthright. And he could probably tell you what, you know, I'll, I'll be the senior of the house and, uh, you know, all of those privileges will be mine and stuff like that. But all of a sudden, he no more knew the value when he was hungry. He didn't mind selling it then because what he cared more about was I need food, right? As he, as he thought, I'm, I'm at the point to die. What shall the birthright do to me, right? He was essentially selling his future for a meal. That's not integrity. Integrity is what Job did. So that even when you're in difficulty, even when you're in affliction, temptation, persecution, whatever the thing is, principle is always what stands. What does God want me to do? God would probably prefer that you continue to do what's right. Remember him and endure the affliction. That was what Job did. If you read Job chapter 27 verses 2 to 6, you see him talking about this. He said, As God liveth who hath taken away my judgment and the Almighty who hath vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. By the time we develop a life of principle for ourselves, so that we act based on what we believe is right, not based on what people will like or what circumstance may demand at any given point, we'll just see ourselves living the same life for 10, 15, 20 years. And by the time we make God's principles what we follow, all of a sudden, 20, 30 years, we're still doing what we did when we first loved God. That's how we remain in the race and we're not swayed by what's on our left hand or right hand or anything like that. So I think I've discussed everything that uh, I had to tell you guys in this video. The essence of what I have said in this video is that if we want to gain the true blessings that God has in store for us, we have to be able to make it to the end of the race. It's not uh, how fast we are at the beginning, but it's at the end of the day, do we make it to the end? Do we get to the end? When we are retired, when we've lived our life, are we still in that same position we were when we were young? Or has something more interesting in life come that took us away from God? Right? I'll repeat what we were told in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast onto the end. And it is only spiritual stamina. It is only that endurance 
with the tips that we just finished discussing, that we will be able to, by the grace of God, make it to the end and inherit the blessings of God that he has in store for us in the world to come. And that is where I'm going to stop on discussing this subject, developing spiritual stamina. So, I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like the different things that I said, then you can click the like button to show your appreciation. And then if you want to join this growing community of Bible enthusiasts, you can click the subscribe button. And then if you want to know when we come back with another video, just like the one you're about to finish, then there's the notification bell, right? So that by the time we come out with a new video, you'll be the first to come. And then I would also advise that you go down to the description because we have some interesting resources there, uh, particularly our four other YouTube channels that uh, have many other videos, some of them hundreds of other videos, like Bible Q&A, Bible Verse Breakdown, Poems of Zion, Smart Spiritual Solutions. You should check those out so that uh, you can be enriched further with other subjects, Q&As, you know, like question and answer, uh, other advice videos, poems, if you're into poetry, and then verse breakdown, right? You take a verse, explain it in the context of other scriptural passages so that we can all be enriched with more wisdom. Anyway, have a good day and God bless you.